Professor from the Lowy Institute in Australia, Michael Fullilove, your microphone is on. Secretary Mattis, uh, first of all, let me commend you, if I may, for taking on your current post with all its stresses and strains. For many of us, sir, you are the hope of the side. General, your speech focused on the rules-based regional order, which has been a preoccupation of this conference for many years, and I'd associate myself with your strong remarks. All of us here in Asia have the right to make our own way without coercion. And I'd like to thank you too for your comment on alliances. But I'd like to ask you about the rules-based global order, which you mentioned at the outset of your remarks and in which President Trump appears to be an unbeliever. 70 years ago, Secretary Atchison wrote that he was present at the creation of a US-led order that has served all of us well. General, given everything over the past four months, including NATO and TPP and Paris, why should we not fret that we are present at the destruction of that order? Please give us cause for optimism, General. Well, uh, you can always count on some straightforward questions here, can't you? Um, <laughs> As far as the, the rule-based order, you know, obviously we have a new uh, president uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, we're all aware of that. And there's going to be fresh approaches taken. But just the fact that, uh, just take a look at the president's first trip uh, to the, uh, outside the United States, was straight into the heart of one of the most uh, bewildering and difficult challenges that the world faces in terms of how do we restore stability and peace, right? Into the Middle East where the discussion was about how do we work together, uh, in this case with the Arab League and with other international organizations in order to reduce the threat of terrorism. So I think that we have been engaged in the world for a long time. I think historically the Americans have been reluctant to see themselves uh, in that role. It's, it, uh, we were quite happy uh, between our two oceans to stay there. The 20th century took us out of that. But at the same time, uh, we recognized, uh, especially the greatest generation, we call them, coming home from World War II, what a crummy world if we all retreat inside our own borders. Uh, how many people deprived of good lives during the Depression how many tens of millions of people killed in World War II, like it or not, were part of the world. That carries through for all the frustrations that are felt in America right now, for the sense that at times we have carried an inordinate burden that is still very deeply rooted in the American psyche, that uh, engagement with the world. And I think that, uh, to quote a uh, British observer uh, of us from some years ago, bear with us. Uh, once we've exhausted all possible alternatives, the Americans will do the right thing. Uh, so we will still be there, and we will be there with you. Uh, the fact that uh, President Trump went to Brussels, uh, he speaks with, wor with actions, too. Uh, he was there to show our, our, our statement that we are standing with the NATO allies 100%. Uh, he sent me on my first trip after I was uh, nominated to uh, Tokyo and Seoul in order to make certain there was no misunderstanding uh, within weeks of him taking office that we stood with the democracies of Japan and Korea. So we are there and I can give you absolute optimism on this issue. Uh,